What is going on, good people? It is 10 11 on the East Coast, March 30th, 2024. The gang is finally all back here. Myself, Ricky Uccino, Crested the Star, Iridium Fierro, and the man himself, Captain Scoops, ready to go. Sean Rossap, fresh off of his match last night. He's ready to rock and roll. He is feisty tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, got some news, uh, which he put out earlier today uh, about uh, Matt Cardona. The, the second that Matt Cardona showed up tonight to wrestle Adam Copeland, an email went out with more information about Matt Cardona's surprise appearance, which <laughs> uh, you all should be subscribing to Fightful Select. It is the best $5 a month you will spend. What is going on, Sean? Almost like I'm proving a point here. So the other day I tweeted, hey, everybody at Squared Circle Expo and WrestleCon that uh, want to do an interview, hit me up. And I say that as in whenever you're, you're free, not trying to take any money from anybody. Whenever you're free, let's promote your vendor, the show, whatever you got going on. Matt Cardona tweets, go to their table and pay them for money. So last night, yeah, boy, main evented the biggest indie show of the year so far. Guess who was jerking the curtain for <laughs> said ya boy. That would have been Matt Cardona. And what I did was in the, in the main event, I wore this shirt, which is one of the, you know, it's a collage of the many times that Matt Cardona said, Hey, well, well, let's promote my figures and my podcast. And, and my my pa all this stuff, my YouTube channel and all that. And you know, he's trying to work matches with me and all that stuff. And it, I think it's sad that he has had to reduce himself to face senior citizens now. So I what Damn. I did was I was backstage at Black Label Pro and I walked up to him and I grabbed him like, you know, by the. Like this, by the way, long time Indiana Fever fan right here. Long time since 2024. Go Caitlin Clark. <laughs> um, I grabbed Matt Cardona by like the collars of his of his custom jacket. Bold. And I said, just so hold on. Don't knock anything just over. So you know, I know. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, just so you know, I know. Oh. And he said, please, sir, don't tell anybody. <laughs> please don't tell anybody. Uh, and I said, you know what? I am paywall Jesus, but it's Easter weekend. So I am I'm feeling it's good Friday. I'm feeling real good right now. And I'm going to do you a favor. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to report this, even though I definitely did in our Discord at FightfulSelect.com. I hinted very heavily over there. And I said, but you better tell me everything else. And he said, yes, I would love to be a stooge for you. Anything, oh. anything for verbatim. you, sir. That, that is verbatim. That's a quote. That's what he said. And listen, my, my reports have been fact-checked and verified for years and years and years. But what I can tell you, um, as, as I sincerely, I, I actually did this. I text messaged Tony Khan and I said, just so you know, I main evented a show that Matt Cardona was on last night. And I got a text back that said, LOL noted. So there you go. <laughs> Who's answering the next Cope Open? Probably somebody who can win, first off. Mm. Oh, who can win, first mm. off. But anyway, anyway, here's the deal. Matt Cardona and uh, the, the AEW deal, on a more serious note, came together this week very late. So Matt has never, I don't think he's ever worked Black Label Pro before. And I was like, that's interesting. Why is he announced for the Black Label Pro portion? And... Not a small match. It's Nick Nemeth that he faced for the Squared Circle Expo Championship. I'm like, that's kind of a wild match to add on a, like a day's notice. And I was like, there's got to be a reason for this. Hmm. What's going on? And then I hear, hey, you know, he's dipping out of the Expo early, right? And I go, what? You, Mr. Moneybags, Matt Cardona? 
leaving the convention early when he can sell his gimmicks, which he's very good at, by the way. What's up here? And I did a little digging. I burrowed on down there. Of course you did. And I found out Matt Cardona was, you know, was brought in and what a killer match they had. It was incredible. It was fantastic. He gets such great heat. Um, they, they had the story built in for any, any of you, where's the story? Well, yeah. I, I'll tell you where it is. It's about 15 years back. I know. I love this. I loved this so much. The second Cardona came out and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then it took me about two seconds and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a damn minute. We're finally getting the, the, the teacher versus the student here. It's the edge versus the edge head. And I loved it. Every popped second. Me. It popped the crap uh, out of me as second. a TNA fan because Joe Hendry literally just did a song about Matt Cardona said you were indie famous. Now you're really rich. But to me, you will always be edges, bitch. And look at where we are. <laughs> and he was like that. he's right once again after tonight. Because guess who, guess who? took back-to-back -back losses this weekend. Matt Cardona did. Oh. Um, Fightful Select confirmed as of now he's not signed. Uh, but like when we had talked to him before, he had said, yeah, we haven't really had any contact or anything like that recently. But, uh, man, good, good for him. Yeah. What I liked about this was – like Matt is very self-confident in what he can do and how he can draw and how he can get over. And he just showed up on cable TV unannounced on a Saturday night, having not been on AEW TV or WWE TV or anything in like four years, just TNA TV that you got to work pretty damn hard to find. Hey, okay. Not too much on TNA. Not too much. <laughs> not too much. Listen. <laughs> and he was super over. He was mega over. People popped for him. They chanted for him. Uh, he got the heat. He did exactly what he has told people that he could do. And, you know, it, it was just wild to me when everybody was getting re-signed, including his wife, who has killed it, uh, by WWE. He was straight up like, they never, they've never, they never called me. And that's wild to me because it's very clear that this iteration of Matt Cardona is over in places like this and can be over. Uh, he just ain't going over on me. Uh, the crazy. other thing that we had reported as we've got, by the way, send in your super chats, send in your humper chats, please. Update on Ricky. So yeah, that was going to be my question. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure you guys are going to talk about it more. Mm -hmm. That was definitely an audible. We, we found out uh, it, he didn't kick out of the whatever. Heads, pin the headstand roll up. Yeah. 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 There you go. The headstand roll up. And the referee did not, he wasn't calling it as a shoot. And they had Ricky take a DDT. And then you could see Darius Martin talking to the referee. And I'm told that was an audible. Uh, Ricky Starks and Big Bill were supposed to win that match. They were supposed to face FTR. I One would assume that FTR would have then got their win back from when they got absolutely crushed months and months ago by them. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, trainers came out to check on Ricky Starks. I've asked about it. I don't know. Um, it's unfortunate uh, because Ricky Starks is the type of guy. I mean, I don't think he really wants to be in a tag team or Big Bill for that instance. Like, but it, it sucks to see when he does get on TV, something like this happens, and hoping yeah. for the best there. And we're we're gonna follow up. Obviously, any updates we have on on an injury like that, we're not gonna put behind the paywall. We'll let you guys know on Twitter and on our free tier of FightfulSelect.com. Uh, but I also want to say uh, Corey Brennan has been killing it over on Fightful yes, Select as well. Okay. I've had some some family stuff going on, some personal stuff going on, and that guy has stepped up and delivered like big time so many times on Fightful Select. So I want to give him a little bit of love because uh, I know it's frustrating when you report things like he has reported and then, you know, aggregators and everything immediately take it and they won't credit him. Sometimes they'll credit me, which, hey, do that. Give me credit. When Cresta says something interesting, give me credit. That's when fair. Iridian makes a good point, give me credit. Do that. Solid. Rick, Rick also says some things that I might want credit for. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I'm just sitting there like, well, there's two. Okay. On occasion. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man. <sighs> what a good night for us. Busy. 
It was, it was a good show. It was I really enjoyed show. it. I'll, and before we go, I'll tell you one booking thing that I really like. So they brought Shibata back. He's got the visa thing. Very clearly, he was brought in to put over Osprey and Danielson. But what I liked was in between those two matches, they had him absolutely crush Kevin Matthews. So that way you wouldn't be like, well, uh, why the hell should we care? You know, why right. just getting crushed back to back? And then immediately after that, he teamed with Danielson and he picked up the win uh -huh. in the main event. I thought that was very smart booking to make it be like, okay, he, he didn't beat those guys, but he's right there on their level as well. I thought that was a very smart booking, uh, booking move. And I enjoyed collision tonight, but guys, thank you all for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you, if you, Get anything else on Ricky? You want to let us know? Hop on Absolutely. in. Let's go on. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Sean. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. You make our lives so much easier. Oh, hell. <laughs> All right, let's go to the trios. All right, let's reset. Ladies, it's been a while since I've seen you. How are you? I missed you. I'm Iridian. Tears. Oh, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't even realize that. You know what? Love it. <laughs> All right, everybody's in their rightful spot. We're good. Man. Gang's all here. Excellent, excellent. I had I had my little sign ready, SRS rules, but it's opposite. Where's your sign? When he said that shirt, I had to write this with the quickness. <laughs> my camera. <laughs> but man, shout out to Sean. He really comes through with those scoops. And I think like we just all get excited when he gets to join us to just give mm -hmm. us little bits because yeah. he's such a great guy. So shout out to you, Sean. You are killing it. Yeah, yes. pat yourself on the back after that banger of a match. I didn't even know you had. Not my boss look, taking bumps. Look, if there is if it there is solid, one thing solid, if there is one thing we don't have to worry about Sean not doing enough of, it's patting himself on the back. Okay, don't <laughs> don't worry about that. That man will promote himself until the end of time, and he should because he's damn good at what he does. Uh, five dollars for Fightful Select. That's all it costs. Uh, and you get all of Sean's great work immediately to your email. You don't have to worry about some of these aggregators uh, getting the story wrong, getting the accreditation wrong. Uh, it's all from uh, from Sean and his sources. Uh, Sean also, Sean is also out there just helping people. Like, I'm not going to go into all the details. I had something that came out uh, earlier this week. Late last week, I had a conversation with Ronda Rousey. That piece dropped on cagelightseats.com. It's on my pinned tweet right now. I highly suggest you guys check it out. Sean did some behind the scenes work to help me out with that. I really appreciate Sean for that. He doesn't have to do that. Like, this is the only work I do for Fightful is right here. That he had nothing to do with what I asked him about, and he still came around and he helped me out for it. And I appreciate Sean uh, for all that good work. So uh, if you want to check out my piece with Ronda Rousey, by the way, at Ricky Uccino at Twitter, it's my pinned tweet right now. Ladies, how are we doing? What are we, overall, Iridian, let's dive into this. By the way, get your super chats in. Get your humper chats in. That's the guaranteed way to get your comment read on the show tonight. We'll read every single one of them. Nick will make sure that I read every single one of them, our great moderator, excuse me, Drew, before I get out of here. Drew Nicholas, that's his name. That's why I said Nick. Anyway, I'm rusty on this. But Drew, our expert moderator, make sure I read every single freaking one of these Super Chats and Humper Chats before we get out of here tonight. Iridian, I did think this was a good show tonight. It's the uh, first collision I've really been able to watch mostly from start to finish uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks because I've been busy with the shoot job down at the radio station. You know what that's like. But what do you think overall tonight? I thought it was a solid show. Um, I was really surprised by it because, you know, there's a lot of great wrestling going on. And I'm like, all right, Collision, you also got to step it up. And they didn't disappoint. So I was really, really glad that we got to see um, some young talent get put over, some fresh faces. I you know we haven't seen a lot of people from Ring of Honor featured, but we got pretty Ring of Honor heavy this week. So I thought it was a really great show i think i would give it maybe like a seven out of ten um but yeah rick cresta what did you guys think i'm gonna agree with you with the seven maybe even for me a 6.5 but mm. i was kind of distracted i was making dinner during this um <laughs> i guess i made beef ribs i was so hungry tonight <laughs> so i Ooh. overall it was good also seeing matt mm. cardona tonight in the first match after he was just on tna on thursday He's working. That's the hardest working man and show the indie god. So uh long story short, today is my 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 best friend of 20 years. It's his birthday. He wanted to go down to the Reds game today. Unfortunately, they lost. Don't, don't, don't get me started on that. But so we go down. The game started at 410. 
Mm. We left downtown Cincinnati and I had to take him up like two counties away. Long story short, I'm leaving his house as collision starts. So I'm literally breaking Ohio law, driving back to my oh, house, my like with my phone on as Edge and, or excuse me, as Adam Copeland and Matt Cardona are wrestling. Cause I'm like, all right, let's see who's answering this. And then it's Matt Cardona. I was like, oh, fuck, I got to watch this. <laughs> Gotta try to watch this as much as I possibly can while not killing myself as I drive back home. So I'm really looking forward to to rewatching this match. Um, I, obviously, I couldn't take any notes on it because I was driving at the same time. But uh, the one thing that I kept going back and noticing, you could just tell how much fun these two guys were having in the ring with one another, like. Adam's giving these like these big, like wide open, like sly smiles. I love the back and forth where they, they, they look, they should know everything about each other. They should know every, you know, trick in the playbook because these guys have history, like going back 15, 20 years now at this point. And it was great to watch the back and forth a little bit that I got to see when the, when the performers are having fun, that's what makes the matches the best. And Iridian, you could just tell these guys were having a ball. I would not be surprised. This isn't a report and this wasn't part of Sean's report. Sean, if you missed it, was on here, said this came together really quickly. I would not be surprised if Adam Copeland was just like, you know, it would be baller is if me and Cardona could do something. And then Tony Khan picked up the phone. Like, I would not be surprised if that's what happened here. I hope that happens. You know, before tonight, when Adam was out there saying, hey, you know, I am now going to be putting my championship title on the line each time I have a Cope Open, you could have given me a thousand guesses and I would have never brought up Matt Cardona. Literally, I could have named probably a thousand people before I even thought about Matt Cardona. So that's why I was like, oh my God, it was such a surprise. I, I popped. So I was like, <laughs> oh my God, Matt Cardona, what are you doing here, sir? You were, you were booked and busy, just like Creston said earlier. What a great showing for him and it's just like it proved again like sean said this guy he's he's amazing he's a star so 10 out of 10 i i really enjoyed this krista what did you think honestly i was a little upset that he did not come out to the music that joe hendry wrote for him it's it's kind of funny mm. you were indie famous now you're really rich but to me, you will always be Edge's bitch. And it had him and Brian Myers when they were Edge heads. And honestly, at this point, <laughs> I thought this was great. Even before the match started, everyone in that arena was saying, holy shit. Because mm -hmm. you would not expect to see Matt Cardona. And like commentary put over, which by the way, Nigel McGuinness was on his job. Jesus may have rested and uh, arrived on the third day of Easter, but Nigel McGuinness was hating tonight from eight o'clock on. He was hating. That man was on one. So that man was at, he was on his shit tonight. He was on his job. Like just overall, this match was good. I do. That man like, stands on business. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you're you're totally fine. I do like that he hit Adam Copeland with the impaler, his own move. I'm like, that's a little disrespectful. And there was a hot second. I was like. You're not going to win this, but maybe, but maybe <laughs> I would like to see them do it again. Cause honestly, bring in TNA. Come on, Joe Hendry. Joe Hendry narrate Sean's music coming down to go fight uh, uh, Matt Cardona. I, I loved, I loved Cardona going for the spear at the end too. Like mm. just, just him trying to give one giant middle finger. Like not only am I going to beat you, but I'm going to beat you with your move. Now, obviously it, it cost him the match, but the, it, it was just, it was just the perfect little touch on the uh, on the end of what was a, a good opener. Again, of what I saw, I can't wait to go back and do it again. Uh, we have a uh, super chat here from Arduit. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm sorry if I completely butchered that. Didn't see Collision joining late, but would like to credit Cresta for Sage Wisdom. I hope I say this right. Delulu is the Salulu has gotten me through the week. Is there what what is there a backstory here that I? Yes, Delulu uh, is the Salulu. So we're all very delusional. And sometimes you got to oh, be word. delusional. And being delusion word. is the solution. So Delulu is the Salulu. That's gotcha. what I listen. I'm going to my shoot job tomorrow at 11 a.m. working straight. And then I'll see you guys Thursday. <laughs> so I'm going to be Delulu this week, too. So. <laughs> oh, well, my God. Yeah, uh, by the way, while, while it's fresh on my mind, uh, we will not be having a collision review show mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's they pushed the collision time back to 1130, 
which is very smart on their part. I don't know if you guys know there's some other kind of show going on next Saturday uh, in Philadelphia, which is, by the way, where all three of us are going to be next week. <laughs> so that's why none of us are going to be here. Uh, we'll, we'll be back the week after. We'll be we'll be sending some pictures from the bar out on social media, though, if you want to, you know. Yes. Yeah. You will yeah. see the selfies, all right? The selfies are going to be amazing. There will be I'm many not drinks. even going to be at the Thursday show. Joel Pearl's going to be by himself like, well, Chris is having fun. <laughs> Me, me and Chris are going to be in the club. We're going to be I'm, partying. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure like 85% of the Fightful staff is going to be in. Full-timers and part-timers are going to be in Philadelphia next week. So it's Unless be, you're Canadian, pretty much you're going to be at yeah, Philadelphia. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there definitely is that. So uh, Adam Copeland uh, does retain against Matt Cardona tonight. Uh, and then there was a uh, a... a, a Lights go out. Oh, yeah. Malachi Black shows up, and Iridian, I am like, let's effing go. Yeah, I'm, I'm been, all in on that. We've been waiting for this kind of pairing, right? And the fact that we haven't really seen Malachi in the ring um, too often. So this is just, again, I feel like to start off Collision was a really, really good choice because you're like, oh my God, now what's happening? Like, what are we going to do? And as soon as those lights go off, literally, you know, anything can happen. So the fact that Malachi came in, you're like, all right, cool. Amazing. And then of course, a Malachi, does ne he's never alone. So of course, Buddy Matthews comes out yep. and, and crazy stuff. Like, I feel like Eddie coming out and then um, Mark coming out. There's Mark's just coming out so much happening i live for this kind of stuff right the more the merrier to me <laughs> it's a slobber knocker at that point it is it really is <laughs> it, it's such an interesting combo adam copeland eddie kingston and mark Brick. they're all three like completely different dudes mm -hmm. now like getting like three completely different personalities and mark is just his own he he's in his own world, but in a, in the best way possible, right? But like you know, just those three dudes together now going up against House of Black, that match made official for Dynasty on April twenty first. Like I'm I was kind of there. expecting, I was kind of expecting Adam to have a TNT title match, but I'm just like, I'll take a banger if you're gonna give me a banger. Like let's go. Yeah, Preston I don't seems happy that. about it. Oh, because I'm gonna be that. Like honestly, I wasn't gonna go, and then I'm I actually like I'm gonna go, and now I, I'm getting all of these great matches. I'm like, wow, this is great, cool, wow, cool wrestling. I mean, if I could have worked out the travel, like I just couldn't. But like, if I could have worked out the travel, Osprey and Danielson's enough to sell me a ticket. Like, don't even care about the rest of the card. Book what you want to book. Mm -hmm. That's enough to sell me a ticket. So I'm jealous. I'm not. Gonna I lie. mean, I'm excited for a, an idea of a three versus three. However. House of Black has been losing a lot. And that doesn't sit right with my spirit, especially with how dominant Julia Hart is as a champion, how dominant they were as trios champion, albeit sometimes a little me, you know? But I, if you put Adam Copeland against Malachi Black and Malachi doesn't win, I might, I might write a strongly worded letter. I might write a strongly worded letter. Yeah, booking this match is going to be interesting. Um you have some outs here like right you don't have to beat adam copeland you don't even have to beat eddie kingston like you could beat mark briscoe like honestly like if you want to protect us from mark briscoe <laughs> i know i get it but well depending on who the depending on who the ring of honor world champion is right because mark and uh and eddie still have to battle it out mm -hmm. and right now they got respect with one another they said they fist pounded it they said they got respect with one another but what happens you know supercar to honor what happens if, if if shit goes down and now all of a sudden there's some they ain't on the same page so much anymore. That could then come into play at, Dyn at Dynasty. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how all of this uh, shakes out. Uh, make sure to get your Super Chats in. Get your Humper Chats in, guys. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Zachary Adams Elliott. Uh, join Fightful's YouTube on the uh, Fightful main roster tier. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate that. Uh, for everybody who is in uh, the show right now, we have an insane audience right now. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on a Saturday night on Easter weekend. Y'all are committed like you read about. Give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet to the Fightful YouTube channel, what the hell y'all waiting for? Uh, go ahead and subscribe while you're there. We really appreciate all your guys' support. Got a super chat here from Tyrone Kid saying, evening to the best triple threat on FIFA. You're so sweet. Uh, what is your plan for WrestleMania week? And who's keeping Cresta out of trouble? That is a great question. I don't know. I don't know who your babysitter is for the week. 
Uh, but uh, I'm literally is, is nine thousand years old. I'm literally Mumra. I don't need a babysitter. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, I'm I'm 36 in like two weeks, and I'm still like a child when I go on vacation. Like I'm like I'm in a place I don't know where I am. Someone help me! Like. <laughs> If it wasn't for my GPS, like the fact that I like, seriously, I drive to a lot of these shows because I'm like, okay, I have my car here. I'm comfortable. Like, I don't have to worry about rental cars and flying and all that stuff. That shit gives me anxiety. Mm. Flying out to Vegas or flying out to WrestleMania in Los Angeles and going through LAX. No dog. I, never again. Uh, never again. I'm good. I don't, I don't need to be doing that with, with my life. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine driving to driving to philadelphia it's gonna be fun uh i'm actually getting there on tuesday because i just found out i'm gonna be uh i got a ticket to becky lynch's book signing tuesday night in philadelphia so that's gonna be a ton of fun hang out with my girl stephanie hypes for a little bit i'm gonna try to actually like enjoy a vacation for like the first couple of days the reds are actually in town playing the phillies i might check that game out on wednesday and have some fun before all the media obligations begin because oh boy there's gonna be a lot of writing I've already done a lot of writing the last week. There's going to be even more writing uh, that is going to be happening. And yeah, the three of us are going to have to get together at some point with Kate and Sean and everybody else and have some fightful fun. Yeah, that's. I think that's the the bigger question, right? Not who's keeping Crest out of trouble, but who's keeping the whole fightful team out of trouble. Like, there's going to be so many of us there. Mm -hmm. It's me. Play. I'm the one it's keeping you. everyone out. Of <laughs> la, 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 la. Look oh, at the we, we are capital <laughs> F. Goodbye. Yes. I didn't even... Notice that shirt on you, ma'am. Add okay. the security for Fightful. It's me. We might be in some trouble, y'all. We, we're going to need more Super Chats for bail money, so uh, make sure to send those in. <laughs> right me. now, Super Chats, Humper Chats, get them all in. Uh, go ahead and just, you know, we'll we'll, we'll just be proactive on, uh, <laughs> on setting bail <laughs> for all of us in Philadelphia. Uh, all right, ladies. Like I said, it, I have, I've been super busy the last couple of weeks with everything I've had going on. I'm a little out of the loop mm -hmm. on our good friends, the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. Oh, uh, what the hell is going on? What 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 was happening tonight? I know Daddy Ass is pissed. He's saying he's gonna beat Jay White. Uh, then then we're getting Max Caster on the mic saying in no in no world can Jay White beat Billy Gunn one on one. And I'm like, what world is you living in? But anyway uh yeah there, there's a lot that i'm i know they split up mm -hmm. apparently there was a home invasion i missed mm -hmm. i missed that too and there, 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 there's a lot of talking there was a lot of there was a lot of talking going on <laughs> this segment tonight man you know what rick uh, cresta and i have been saying it for the past few weeks that like the the scissor the scissor me bang bang gang crew whatever it is scissor ass boy bang group <laughs> yes, whatever whatever Jesus. all of them were called um, we flew too close to the sun with this idea, right? Yeah. We, I think it was better in our minds. And then when we finally got it, we're like, you know what? Maybe this isn't what we thought it was going to be. And then Max Caster was not rapping anymore and he forgot his rap. And then he tried again and then it didn't work. And tonight he came out and he didn't even have a mic. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe that voice is for the better. So I don't know. It's like we're, we're given and we're taken, but I honestly was not a fan of this segment. I was kind of confused. I wasn't liking what Max was saying. And I, I, I just don't understand. I feel like it just wasn't hitting and maybe it was just me, but I wasn't feeling this promo. I think maybe it could have been better as like a va backstage video package. Maybe I think it would have been a little cleaner because it just seemed a little sloppy to me. I don't know how it seem to you guys but so i what, so what yeah. you're saying is this was the promo version of this should have been an email is that what yes. you're, yeah is that what yes. you're kind of saying a little bit Absolutely. less is less is more yes. on this one yeah uh yeah I, i'm i'm kind of with you um on that i think i think we all just fell in love with the name right and we fell in love with the name and the idea and the initial story let's not forget these two groups came together because they were assaulted by the undisputed kingdom and then they literally never revisited that whole part of the story. Never. Undisputed Kingdom are like, nah, y'all were just catching strays. We don't really care about you, like, right at now. all. At <laughs> all. At all. And then this group is, they're together, and then they literally do nothing, and then they're, now they're broken up again because they're just, they, they just didn't mix well, you know? It's like, it, 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 I don't know. It just seemed destined to, when they didn't go to the Undisputed Kingdom story, it just seemed like they didn't know where to go with it, Krista, at least to me. 
I'm going to say that there are two things, because you know I'm all peace, love, positivity, and I love wrestling. I tried to be objective as I could here. I did find this segment like this could have been an email. However, <laughs> I do think that there's a more serious side of the acclaim coming out. And yeah, I think maybe Max Caster not rapping every week is for the best. Yeah. Save it for something like important things, a blood feud, a pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he's a bad rapper. I mean, unless you want to battle rap for charity, I'm on my Jeremy Lambert, like hippity hop. Maybe you just don't have the bars to do it every week. Maybe they said, after you forgot once, I'm taking it. I will like to say that Twink Blade, Jay White popped me. I was like, I I, I know Anthony Bowens told you what that was. So <laughs> that was really funny. But I do agree. Like, I don't know what we're doing here. And I agree we flew too close to the sun. It was great. Y'all didn't even do them versus Jeff Jarrett, which would make sense next after Undisputed Kingdom because there's a million people in the Jeff Jarrett crew or the Don Callis crew. It got old, real old, real fast. Great. I'm glad this is over. That also being said, I agree with Max Casters. There's, uh, I don't know. There's not, not, there's not a world where the ass boys beat the acclaim. I'm sorry. Unless some shenanigans happen. <laughs> I like calling them the ass boys too. Dan Housen, he got y'all. He got y'all good with that. He got them over with that. He did them a massive favor. Like, let's be honest. Yes. But also imagine you being the gun club and no matter what you do, no matter where you go in life, you're like, ass boy. Hey. It's for Jimmy, Kurt Angle. Give me a reaction. Just give yeah, me a reaction. Kurt, Kurt Angle, you're right. You suck. Even when he's a good guy, you suck. <laughs> Apathy is death. If they don't give a crap about you, you're toast. Forget yeah, it. That's Forget true. it. Those guys are going to hear ass boys for the rest of their lives, and they should be sending Dan Housen money every single time it happens. Until they lean into the gimmick, become good guys, and come out to their dad's old music. We're the ass boys. Oh, Bam. God. <laughs> I can't, oh. Damn it. I've never wanted something more now. Yep. I've never wanted something more. And they finally they could, go they, they could come down with the 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 bright pink and green lip shorts yes! and just do the whole thing, the whole thing, the whole thing. That would be over in about eight seconds. Uh, and I mean that, manager. that would be <laughs> Halloween for a Halloween episode. Ooh, yeah, that Bass on good. the beach. Wait, do they have the rights for that? Or is that a WWE? I don't know who has the rights to that. Sorry, never mind. I don't know. I, can switch I, up. I mean, WWE does Great American Bash. is basically the same thing. Uh, let's see here. So we did get uh, the quarterfinals tonight. By the way, get your Super Chats in. Get your Humper Chats in. Again, it's the only way to get your comment guaranteed uh, get read on the air before the end of the show tonight. Uh, FTR against the Infantry. Uh, Carly Bravo and Captain Sean Dean. Before this match, FTR had a good promo segment tonight backstage, and they, they brought up the tie-in, right? Because this it's a business. So they're going to tie everything into, into March Madness and say, hey, everybody loves a Cinderella. I'm not going to lie. Early on in this match, I'm sitting here going, you know what? I wouldn't mind the Cinderella upset here. Like, I, 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 I really wouldn't. Like, let's maybe give another younger team a shot because I'm, I'm, I'm still a little confused about this bracket comes out, right? And immediately it was like, okay, so we're going to be doing FTR and Young Bucks. That seems to be the direction that we're going here. Maybe Ricky and Big Bill. We know that's not going to happen now. And again, we'll, we'll get to there in the unfortunate uh, incident that happened with Ricky tonight. But I'm sitting here, I'm going, if that's the direction, why did FTR lose to Claudio and, and Moxley at, at the pay-per-view? That didn't make a ton of sense to me. But I like their promo where they said, hey, look, we, we, we're not doing our best work right now we took an l but we need to go out here we can't overlook these guys we can't let the, uh, ourselves get upset on this one we need to be the first ever three-time tag team champions we need to prove that we are the best tag team out there early on i found myself rooting for carly and the captain but as the match wore on you could really see ftr's experience kind of outshine them a little bit here in this one. I think it was a good showing for them. I think they just ran out of gas a little bit at the end. Sean Dean had a little bit of a uh, a slip up there at the end of the, in, in the break that he was trying to do. And it looked like Carly was just a little slow on the on some of his moves, but I love his facial expressions. These are two guys who only have like 150 matches between them over like the last five years. Compare that to like the 900 that FTR has. These guys are good. They're only going to get better. I did think they made the right call on having FTR win at the at the end of it, even though I was rooting for an upset earlier in the night already. 
Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think FTR's promo was really great because they are, you know, like it says in their names, they're top guys in the company. And for them to also be like, all right, you know, these guys might not be as experienced as we are, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't take them seriously. Like these guys are competition and they are. Um, if anybody came out looking like a star in that match, it was definitely uh, Carly Bravo. I was so impressed, like amazing. That guy is super talented. So the infantry also came out serving looks 10 out of 10, very impressive for them. I am always down for FTR to lose. That's no <laughs> That's no shade to Damn. FTR because I think they're a fantastic tag team, right? They're just, they're so good. They don't need all of these wins. That's what I'm saying. So I am always down for stuff, you know, them to put over somebody else because they're so good. So the fact that, you know, they picked up the win tonight, I was like, well, okay, I see it. Um, but man, it's, I thought it was a really, really good, um, match and shout outs to Carly Bravo. Cause I really think he came out the star of the, um, the whole match yeah he like i said krista the guy every time he like hit a move i don't know it looked like his eyes were about to explode out of his head like he <laughs> is really working on telling a story inside the match and selling his emotions and that does go a long way inside the ring they were slapping the tattoos off of that man i normally say you get your nipples slapped off but his whole chest meat I, Carly Bravo, I believed. And one thing AEW does right is tournaments. I feel like this tournament so far has done for the infantry what it did for Daniel Garcia. I'm so interested in the infantry now. I want them to do more things. I'm, I'm literally, I'm rooting for you. I'm literally rooting for them. I want them to be the best. I mean, honestly, also, too, I got to give a shout out to that fan who had the Orange Cassidy thumb sign, but it was down for the whole match. <laughs> it was on the hard cam side too. So no matter what FTR did, all you see is this. <laughs> so whoever that fan is, that was well played. Very well played. <laughs> also got to give a shout out to commentary. He said, I, I don't know if it was Nigel McGinnis or I forgot who the other young man on commentary was. He said, I thought you said he was in the Navy. It looks more like the Air Force. I'm like, yo, commentary yeah. tonight. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> it might have been Ian who said that. Ian Riccoboni. <laughs> I love Ian Riccoboni since the first couple of collisions where he was rapping over Willow's song. At first I was like, what the fuck is this? And then I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Ian was on his Ian was on his stuff tonight. Uh like, yeah, there was a lot of great stuff in common. N Nigel was just his normal savage self. So, like he was beyond tonight. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone spit in his coffee. I don't know. Nigel was super hating tonight. He was right, and, super hating tonight. And when, when Sean was on earlier, he's talking about how it was a, a smart booking decision to have Shibata get the pin. And we'll get to the main event here. And like having uh, Shibata get the pin was a smart booking decision. And I'm like, yeah, it was now that you say that. But I wanted Danielson to get the win just because he was getting so much shit from Nigel on commentary tonight. <laughs> Like, ah, uh, the clam digger, and he's he's getting bailed out again. I really wanted Danielson to just get the win, just so Nigel would shut the fuck up. <laughs> Danielson's retirement like, match has got to be Danielson versus Nigel McGinnis at this point. I mean, it's gotta what, what are we be. doing? What are we, it's it, if, be. if it's not the last one, it's got to happen before the last one. Like, and for extra spice, Jay Lethal is a special guest enforcer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm oh, <laughs> good night. We had Kyle O'Reilly in action for a little bit tonight. Uh, kind of a squash match against JD uh, Drake tonight. Uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of Kyle O'Reilly just trying to chop chop down the big red wood. He finally gets him down. He ends up getting him to tap out with a cross arm breaker. And then we get undisputed era coming out there and hoisting him up like the the big hero uh, Oridian. And they're they're trying their best. They are trying their best. You know, I was really excited for this match. And as soon as Kyle, you know, I see him and I'm like, all right, let's go. We're time. We're going to get some wrestling. And then two minutes later, the match is over. Uh -huh. I'm like, come on. What are we doing here? Uh, but Kyle is just so fun to watch when he's out there. It feels like the way that he hits. He's like a man two times his size. Like he hits hard. And again, like you said, Roddy comes out with, um, the undisputed kingdom and i'm like what are we doing here i feel like they're trying to recruit him and show him that like they are the it group but they're really not right i feel like yeah. until you until you have adam cole back you are not the it group and i'm sorry roddy it's just not 
hitting for me. And if anything, I'm like, all right, maybe Kyle could be, you know, the leader of that crew, but I don't know what we're going to do right now. I think Kyle is absolutely better by himself. If he gets the opportunity to have just a couple more matches, because he's a great wrestler. He's fantastic. And I think that he could have some really, really great bangers with some more technical wrestlers, which Crest and I found out that we are technical girlies. So we like the grapples. We like the grapples. We like it. Tech crew. Yes. Um, I, I would actually like to see Kyle and Roddy have Together. a feud and, oh. and wrestle with one another. Like, honestly, like the, uh, have them fight over uh, the, the international championship. By the way, I said Undisputed Era. That's my fault. Undisputed Kingdom. They know old habits we- die hard. All right. Old habits die hard. Uh, th- thank you, Mike, in the chat for uh, pointing out my mistake, though. I, I want to try to make things get things right. Krista, what do you think tonight? I don't think you're wrong because I'm a maybe this is a hot take and yell at me if you would must. But isn't Undisputed Kingdom just a discount Undisputed Era anyway? We're just waiting for Bobby Fish to stop singing by the seashore at this point. <laughs> We're ready. Like, let's, like I'm not I'm I'm not trying to disparage Matt Taven mm-hmm. and Mike Bennett. Mm-hmm. However, Undisputed Era was so iconic that anytime you even think about saying Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, or Kyle O'Reilly, or Bobby Fish, the, all of the other names come up in conversation. Yeah. Anytime I see one of these guys in a faction, I'm like, so why don't we just do Undisputed Era? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And that's how I feel like, why don't we just do Undisputed Era? Like any, it's it's the same, it's the same archetype, but for all of that, I'd rather have back Undisputed Era. It's it's nothing against Matt Taven again and Mike Bennett. They're great. And I think they were better with Maria Canellis. However, it's just the curse that these four men had. They were so good together. So anytime again, once they're in a group, I'm like, eh, so we can just get Undisputed Era. Cause I what is Bobby Fish doing? Like he's he's at the seashore, sea shanty. Get Bobby Fish. What are we doing? You are you have all the players here have them turn on the undisputed kingdom had the undisputed kingdom join with the righteous and now you've got a great 4v4 blood and guts i've booked it for you tony khan you want my number period so, the only problem is you can't split undis- undisputed kingdom before you can't mjf bump comes back though Okay, we're not thinking about MJF in the picture right now. We're thinking about everybody who's in a faction, and it's believable. Like, when BCC was hot and beating everybody up, like, they were the it girls. Yeah. Like, undisputed era, whatever they would be called now, they would be the it girls coming out because they would be hot, right? It would Them be- versus BCG? What? Amazing. Exactly. And, again, no shade to... um the kingdom but i think they're better as a tag team i think when you start adding more people that kind of diminishes their light and they are good but it's just like right now we're focused on again roddy and kyle so that's not making them look good unless we are seeing them constantly fighting every week and we're not seeing that so i feel like that's where the disconnect is for me uh, we did get a uh, a super chat here from uh, Marco Dominguez, and uh, I did just check to verify it is there. Uh, Ricky's IG story right now up on Instagram from about 20 minutes ago, quote, I'm all good. Everything checked out fine was being precautious. So uh, a good update from we Ricky Starks himself yeah. uh, on his uh, Instagram story. So let's go ahead and dive into this match. It was Big Bill. It was Ricky Starks uh, versus Top Flight. This is a match that Sean already uh, has reported earlier on the show and then put up on Fightful Select uh, that did not go as planned. It was a uh, called an audible. And actually, I, I went back and at, you could tell right away from the... Um, I believe it was Darius who had the handstand roll up. The referee mm-hmm. said that Ricky kicked out when he clearly did not kick out. And I'm just sitting here. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Did Darius just have that in too tight? And Ricky couldn't like get, out, get yeah. the shoulder up. Like what, what is going on here? He didn't even move after though. No, he did not. Uh, he ends up getting to his feet. He throws a, um, I don't want to say a half ass clothesline, but he throws a, not as crisp clothesline as he usually does. He eats a tornado DDT. He does not move. And the referee still barely gets the three count down. And then after he gets the three, they start playing Ricky's music. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, something went wrong. Mm -hmm. Something clearly went wrong. I went back on a replay. I don't know if this is exactly where it happened, but there was a point right before the handstand roll up where Darius flipped off the top rope and hit a Pele kick and immediately 
you see Ricky go down and kind of hold the back of his neck. And then he rolls out to the ring. And then there's this little bit with Bill. And then Ricky immediately comes back in and it's the handstand roll up. And from that point on, Ricky was not right. Um, so I, I don't know if that's exactly where it happened. It was such a weird angle. I'm trying to watch this uh, over again to see because it looked like the foot came down in the small of his back, but maybe the knee hit the head and the neck area. It was hard for me to see. Uh, I tried to watch it over and over again, but that to me looks like uh, where things happened. Either it was that or it was the insiguri that he hit that we couldn't see because uh, Dante was in the way when it happened uh, in the camera angle as well. Either way, we did get an update from Ricky. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is, is that this match just did not go according to plan. And sometimes these things happen, Iridian. That's so scary um, that we, like, just watching it, you're like, wait. Because in your mind, you're also like, oh, my God, something's wrong. Like, you start to process this. And literally, it could be anything, right? So I'm glad that he's okay. Um, before ricky came out i was like all right what are we doing with ricky starks right ricky and big bill they were as a tag team we're like what what are they doing because i feel like ricky is the guy right he's got such star power and they're just not using him i feel like you kind of get close and then they kind of just fumble him which is unfortunate right because he's had some really really great matches with some of these top stars and um you know top flight went over tonight but because of of what happened um good for top flight hopefully they'll be able to take advantage and be shown in a in a great light but when ricky was just laying there and he didn't kick out he was like still in that position right after and i'm like oh my goodness like something's wrong and then you hear ricky's music play and you're just like oh no this is not good like you get worried so seeing things like this happen in real time is is really insane right cresta yeah and this harkens back to a promo that ricky stark said before i think he got into the stat team with big bill every time he gets close something happens that always isn't his fault and it just stops. Like you said, they get so close to the sun. Y'all got the bang, bang, scissor game close to the sun. But when you should be doing it with Ricky Starks, we don't do anything. So I'm glad he's okay. I'm glad they did it over an abundance of caution. I will end off my little quick analysis over with uh, Big Bill's boots were very nice. They were a very pretty color. And apparently his alma mater, NYU, their women's basketball team won something. So kudos to commentary for putting that out there. And um, I'm happy Ricky Starks is okay. So here's my thing about Big Bill. <clears throat> that man might just be too damn big because I could not, for the life of me, buy any of the offense that Top Flight was hitting on him throughout this entirety of the match until Darius was on the apron and kicked him in the face because he was finally at the right height to actually get any kind of Mm. like force behind a strike that guy is I, anytime i see that guy in the ring i'm just going why the hell is this man not wrestling for world championships this man is gargantuan <laughs> and he should be on a monster singles run like it's they're just not putting him against the right people. Right? You need to see Big Bill versus Lance Archer. Yes. You need to see him. Right now, he's on the Lance Archer all-star team of what the fuck are we doing with this big man? They're the waiting all for the meat division. <laughs> yes. All of the big men right now, I feel like they're on an island and they're just waiting, right? They need Somebody needs to send them a boat to get them onto land where we can have this meat division. Because what is this? And especially when you put them against Top Flight, like no shade to Top Flight, but like Big Bill, his name, like half of his it, name is literally as big. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> Mm -mm. I didn't mean for that to sound as funny as it did, by the way. Like in, in retrospect, it does say it, yeah, anyway. You know, you're uh, right because I think the video or the backstage interview beforehand for Clarity, Lexi there, and Big Bill are dating in real life. Mm -hmm. All I could see with her next to him was like, Daddy, a piece. Like, holy hell, he's really tall. He's so tall. Daddy, a piece, please. A piece. A piece. <laughs> Oh my God. Now I know what you mean. It's like top flight. They're very talented, but it's kind of giving Chihuahua going after a great day. What are we doing? They're different. <laughs> they're different divisions and it's totally fine. Like top flight is like cruiserweight esque. Right. And then yeah. you've got big bill. He's heavyweight. There's he's literally three. big. <laughs> he's literally heavy. I mean, top flight are his legs. Like that's <laughs> 
<laughs> Again, I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying Big Bill's too damn big. Too That's big. all I'm saying. And it and it looks like that in the in the ring, right? Because we'll get to um the main event later. But Lance Archer is huge. Yeah. When you see him in that ring, you're just like, oh my god. So of course there is that juxtaposition, and it's it sometimes works well, right? You know, you had Rey Mysterio who was tiny in the ring, and then you always put him against someone who was literally Big larger show. than life. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's what happened here. <laughs> I feel like that. But I feel like every match Bill is in, it's Rey Mysterio versus Big Show. He's seven feet tall, and you can't teach that. Everyone is small in Big Bill. I am going to be interested to see what happens now. Uh, Because, again, it was supposed to be Big Bill and Ricky versus FTR in the semifinals. Hey, look, good for top flight. They're going to get this match against FTR. They're going to go out there. They're going to show out. They're probably going to get beat because they were supposed to get beat tonight. Um, So... We'll see. Maybe they'll call another audible. Maybe they'll go another direction. Um, this is the first time we were seeing Ricky and Bill in the ring since they lost the tag team titles. And then this happens. So again, and I'm with you, Iridian. Like, I feel like Ricky should be. I feel like we talked about this after the CM Punk firing. Like, okay, immediately transfer over to Ricky. Like, make collision Ricky show. Make collision Ricky show. And if you ain't going to make collision Ricky show, Make it Mercedes damn show. Like, let's go. What are we doing? Don't forget about Ricky. Like, you can't. <laughs> yeah. No, don't forget about Ricky. That's fine. Just give, yeah. you, uh, two, uh, give an hour to Mercedes and an hour to Ricky. There's collision every week. I'm good. <laughs> Honestly, book it. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving you these ideas for a free 99 on a Saturday night after collision. Like, all you got to do is take the ideas. And again, okay, so now the question is, again, where do we go? Oh, yeah, from here, because what are we doing with Ricky? Are we keeping him with Big Bill? I feel like they would absolutely be better as singles competitors, but are we going to get that? Who knows? I'm going to be real with you. This is a very long roundabout way to get to FTR Bucks 3. I, I'd rather you just be honest about it. I, 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 I'm going to watch it, but I I, I see what's happening see here. <laughs> and mm. it better be a blood and guts match. <laughs> And this is someone who don't like blood and guts. But at this point, just do it. Just do it. There's there's no other way. And that'll solidify Matt and Nick. Jack I'm sorry. Matthew, Matthew. and Nicholas. You better. Matthew. You best damn call them Matthew and Nicholas. My because we also, yeah, we don't want to get fined. I don't want to no. get fined. They'll find a way to find us. And we don't even work. They'll, fi they'll hire us just to fire us. They will. <laughs> I'm going to be on the Stokely Hathaway team with my side. Like, wait a minute. Help. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, we do have Drew Davidson saying, I think Ricky versus Big Bill will happen one day. Then I feel like we're just stuck in rinse and repeat because then we're going right back to Ricky and Hobbs again. Like, it's, it's the same thing. You know, they just got this man caught in a cycle. Like, Don't be a they weren't going to win the tournament, tournament, which that's what Sean speculated, that FTR would have got that win anyway. Um, yeah, at least they won't have to change what's next for them if they figure out what's next, what they were going to do next for them. Ladies, 920 tonight. You know what that meant? Thunder Rosa versus Lady Frost. I like Lady Frost a lot. I want to see her more on my TV screen. I like Thunder Rosa a lot. I want to see her more on my TV screen. I like this match a lot tonight. What do you think, Rudy? Yeah, Thunder Rosa is fantastic. And I love that the crowd was also behind Lady Frost because she deserves that. You know, she's great. And sometimes when you have like you know, the fan favorite and the other one isn't really, then the other person just gets booed. And I think that's so unfortunate because the wrestlers also putting in work. Okay. We need to be more respectful as fans. So I cheer everybody or like cheer lightly. If I, if it's FTR, I cheer lightly. <laughs> See, now I want you to just bring a big ass sign to WrestleMania that just says respect. Like, that's just like <laughs> Okay. And you know what? Thunder Rosa, after uh, she picked up, picked up the win in English and Spanish, I love this about her. She will tell you how she's feeling in both languages, 10 out of 10. So she said, put some respect on my name. And I appreciate that. So I, everyone better do what she says because she scares me a little bit. Krista? You couldn't pay me to fight Thunder Rosa. Mm -mm. And we were talking about this in my Discord. We were watching this. Those who have wrestled in CMLL, MLW, any Mexican promotion, they fight. <laughs> they fight. Yeah. They fight. Mm -hmm. And Lady Frost was no slouch this match either. Lady Frost, when she did that handstand moonsault mm -hmm. off the top rope into a into a hurricane run, I was like, that, that eats. But 
that missile drop kit that followed from Thunder Rosa right after, oh I, I quit. I quit. I quit. It's not I quit match, but I quit in this moment. I quit. I will also say Tony Schiavone tonight, McFucking had it with Nigel McGinnis. And this was the match that he was like, yo. So let, I wrote it down. I said, so Tony finally lets Nigel have it because he used to get beat up. And then Nigel said, and we're cutting to commercial. He was like, oh, so you know these chops like when you used to get beat up. Yo, where would we be right back? Picture in picture. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, that, Nigel. That was wild because Nigel, I've never heard that man cut off somebody on commentary so loud and just yelling. He said, we're going to commercials because he's like, oh, that's how Brian Danielson used to beat you up, right? Like, wild. <laughs> It's got to be Danielson versus Nigel McGinnis at this point for the retirement match. I don't want nothing else. We got uh, Laurent Ford with a super chat here. Thank you so much. Can they get Lady Frost some wins to make it feel like she had even a remote chance of winning? She's too good to be used uh, as an enhancement talent. Uh, look, and, you know, right before that, we had C. Henry say uh, Lady Frost will be all elite soon. You can give me the damn graphic, like, right now. Like, let's go ahead and just make this happen because she's she's damn good and i get where you're coming from right like it, it would the talent is there for her to go against thunder rosa now thunder rosa had storyline immunity tonight because she was number one in the rankings and she's clearly being set up here i think to, to take on tony storm who we'll talk about in a second after she broke the damn internet tonight um but uh she's clearly being set up for that so we all knew thunder rosa was going to win the match but yeah putting some like wins on lady frost and having her really be like a a more credible opponent from a win-loss standpoint i'm not saying that lady frost is incredible but to have a little bit of equity built up would have been nice ahead of time for this match especially since this really wasn't an enhancement match at all like lady this lady frost got her work in tonight she got her shots in tonight this this was good this was a good eight minute sprint tonight a hard hitting uh eight minute sprint tonight uh another super chat here uh from tom lee valley saying uh danielson versus nigel at all in book it tk three exclamation points that's why let's I'm go at. that's why you're doing all your dream matches now so when you do your retirement match and there's nobody in that arena if you did it in wembley is going to be cheering for nigel that's all i'm saying <laughs> so here's the match i want strap match <laughs> not the immediate violence <laughs> all the violence brian danielson should be able to take every literal shot for every metaphorical shot that nigel has been taking for the last year and a half he's already dead rick stop do you remember the strap match that danielson had with ricky i was there yes i remember every hard. gunshot that went off in that arena that I, night i remember just like oh my god like there was surround sound to that right now could you imagine it echoed the halls nigel who he actually has history with like if he was hitting ricky that hard a man who didn't really he didn't have beef with how hard do you think he would hit nigel bro i just read the chat and said if it's a strap match i was going to use magic to cheat he's doing a magic show wrestlemania weekend he's gonna be like pakistan okay so nigel has audience involvement in his magic shows we need to go, guys, okay? It's the same time as Wale Media. And no matter what Joe Pearl tells you, I wasn't considering going to Nigel's show because it has seats and Wale Media does it. That's a lie. And no matter <laughs> what he says, that's not true, okay? It's a small <laughs> venue. And, like, we could go to Wale Media after. We we could figure this out. We could <laughs> both of them. Both of them. Both of them. I just don't want to leave in the middle of his show and then he calls on us. And then he, and then he calls us out and then he calls us clam diggers. <laughs> <laughs> no and it's a small enough venue that he will see us get up and leave and he's gonna call us out on commentary i saw those two clam diggers leaving my from show fightful, from fightful i mean let's be honest though at any show if 20 percent of the audience got up and left you know it's gonna be noticeable i'm just saying <laughs> Listen, you better stop. Nigel's gonna start running you down too, Rick. <laughs> I'm kidding. Everything I say on here is a joke. He's gonna be like, give me a strap match with that guy. Only if you have a strap match with Darius at first. <laughs> Luckily, I am on I can't believe I'm saying this. Luckily, I'm on the shelf, so I'm good. 
No medical clearance. <laughs> uh, we had Tony Storm backstage tonight with Renee Paquette. Um, yeah, my first note here is Tony Storm's batshit insane. Uh, and I mean that in the best way possible. She is absolutely great. Um, Renee informs her that we are going to have a number one contenders match on Wednesday. It is going to be Thunder Rosa versus Mariah May. And then Tony just gets this, this look on her face and she turns around to Mariah and she's like, this was your plan all along. Like she's ready to just cut ties and smack her and this, that, and the other thing. Um, yeah, no, she just kissed her like full on. Like, let's just do this. Kissed Mariah May and the entire internet uh, lost their damn minds as uh, Tony continued to do, calling her a genius, saying, I see a lot of myself in you, which is great because I love me. Uh, she tells Thunder Rosa she should have retired as champion because I'm trying to remember. Lightning Daffodil is never going to get this back. Yeah, Tony, Tony is just. She's on. She was on one more than Nigel was tonight already. You know, when you look at somebody and you're just like, oh, my God, I, I love this person so much. Like, even though they're crazy, like, I still love them. It's like, ha, girl, you're so crazy. Like, something <laughs> like that, you know, I feel like that's how Tony is. And I really when Mar Mar Mariah Carey, Mariah Carey, <laughs> Mariah <laughs> May. <laughs> I don't know her. I don't know her. Where did that come from? I don't know. I'll say, I guess Mariah, you can, you know, when Mariah was out there. Look, Mariah is in the closet with the rest of the Christmas decorations. All Mariah right. We'll talk to her in December. Dead. dead. When Mariah May came into AEW, I was like, okay, well, maybe if she's working with Tony, we're going to get this like Trish Stratus and Mickey James storyline. And I feel like that's kind of where we're going, where eventually she is going to go crazier than Tony because that love was like not reciprocating. Somebody said that it was Will Washington brainwashing because I said Mariah Carey. I am dead. <laughs> Maybe it was. Maybe it was. I don't know. But um, I am going to be in the minority and say that I don't think the segment needed the kiss. Um, I don't know. I feel like it just it didn't. But I see where they're going with it. I don't know. I feel like it was just like a cheap pop. I yeah, don't know. so the, the thing that was interesting uh, to me about this, Cresta, was Mariah's reaction, which was she didn't hate it. She she definitely did not hate it. It was almost like this is this is what she's been waiting for. And this is what she was wanting. That's the reaction I read on on her face tonight. I don't know if this is going to continue to go in that direction, but it's definitely an interesting step. In it's very point. theater. And when that happened, the look on Mariah's face was, something yeah. has changed within me. <laughs> if you know, you know, if you get the reference, you get the reference. I will also say, <clears throat> the kiss didn't make sense. It was very much, so you were going to take my gold and tie me up on the railroad? You genius. Mwah! You're so beautiful. Also, that wasn't the first take because Tony's makeup was already smudged. And so was Mariah's face. <laughs> and she said it the second time. She said it. That was much better. Also, shout outs to Luther because he had the Nick Nemeth should have been me face. <laughs> Salt, boys. He was so mad. I love Timeless Tony Storm. That is peak delusion. I want to be that delusional one day. I want to be so rich where I can be like, I don't, I don't need this job. So you're not coming to work. Oh, work. I don't dream of labor. I'm hanging up the phone now. <laughs> Poor Luther getting friend zoned on national television. Just He's a butler. <laughs> We all know why he took that job. <laughs> Call him out. Call him out, Rick. Rick, because I'm calling out the bad behavior. You're not really worried about hospitality. Oh, my gosh. By the way, I don't know how Renee keeps a straight face. Oh. Literally ever. Literally ever. She is, like, she plays the perfect straight man in all of these interviews. Because no matter who's yet, because people be yelling at Renee. She's just like, I don't get paid enough for this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean... Between this and the Young Bucks telling her to smile more, like, oh. she's had a week. <laughs> and I feel like before this, wasn't somebody else just yelling at her? Oh, they were throwing a shoe at Renee before. <laughs> Poor girl. She don't need this. She needs a raise. Yeah. She needs to be allowed to go on vacation with her husband. That's what she needs to be allowed <laughs> to do right now. 
he needs to go on vacation. That's he is on vacation. Well, he's wrestling while he's on vacation, but yeah, yeah it's not a vacation. We, we haven't seen him in a hot minute. What, what the man loves to wrestle. He does. You know what? I'm taking. I'm literally taking my vacation next week. You know what I'm doing? Working. <laughs> the hardest working man is show. Taking on, vacation Carter. days for my shoot job so I can go work some more in another city. But I mean, I'm that's covering wrestling. Doing. That's not work. That's not work. Let's be completely honest. Our main event tonight was Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli, and uh, Cassiori Shibata against Lance Archer and the Righteous. I'll just say we had justified meat chance tonight, Cresta. This was uh, th- this was beef of all sizes tonight. This this was this seemed right up your alley. I loved it. Only thing, my critique is I miss Lance Archer coming out with a random jabroni by the seat of their pants or just throwing someone out before he would saunter out. I want, I mean, if we're going to make Lance Archer continuously eat pins, the least you could do is have him throw out some enhancement talent. I miss that. Bring it back. This match was really good. I feel like I saw Shibata twice that match at the beginning and at the end, and I respect it. (laughs) He, he stands on business. He's just there to get his wins. Uh, there was one part in this match that made me laugh out loud. Um, Iridian. It, it was, it was Danielson. It was Danielson struggling so hard to lock the little bell lock in on Dutch. Like he is struggling. He is trying. And he immediately after he gets in there, Lance Archer just gets in the ring and kicks him in the face. Like, just like seconds. I don't know why that spot made me laugh so much. It was just like Lance Archer got in the ring. Like, Bitch, please <laughs> get the hell out of here. Um, but I'll tell you what, of all the talent that was in this match and all the talent that this company has, Claudio Castagnoli might be my favorite dude to watch, period. His hot tag is arguably the best in the business. What that man is able to do from an athleticism standpoint the the strength standpoint like this guy is just slinging around lance archer like it's nothing yeah. he is just so damn good and he is so fun to watch and it is a crime that this man was kept down for so long over in the e um yeah i'm i'm glad that when on nights like tonight when he gets to shine iridian i'm a happy guy no i agree with you i think claudio is such a talent he is amazing and when you put lance archer in the ring when you give him time you get to see what lance archer can do especially with a guy like claudio right it was fantastic when oh oh man i love claudio swing so when i thought i'm like okay we didn't get to see it last week we kind of saw a little bit he picked him up but it didn't really happen we got the full on swing this week and i big pop for that amazing (laughs) and you saw lance like kind of like wave his hand at the end and that's when Claudio was finally all right cool I think that might have been the signal but that was so funny to me because I feel like that's got to be a little embarrassing right to be swung by Claudio as a big man like that it's got it's got to hurt your ego a little bit but man it was just so hilarious seeing Lance just go around and round in that ring and again this goes back to our meat division Lance was long he, they took up all of that space inside that ring tonight yeah you know what though on on another side the other side of that, not being able to experience this myself because I'm not, you know, a seven foot giant. Part of that has to be fun for Lance Archer, though, because it's like he never gets to experience stuff like that in the ring. Who else can do that? Exactly. When Claudio gets to have these moments in the ring, you can tell that man is lifting weights in that gym. OK, he is up there putting in those pounds. So shout out to Claudio. He's great. I don't know if the swing would be fun. I That's. I have two top moves that are super demoralizing. The swing and number one is the angle slam because all your leggies is in the air. Like, <laughs> that's pretty demoralized. That's super. De- you are grown, man. You said Lance Archer is six feet seven. So Claudio Castellan thinks like, what, six five? This man got you by your ankles. It's like, like <laughs> Claudio I'm Castagnoli, e- give me the formuoli because you be beating people up. And it's not like he just swings you. That standing moonsault he did. Hella athletic. That uppercut where he like leaps from the middle of the ring. Oh my God. He's so good. He's so, like you said, he's a wrestler's wrestler. He, yeah. It was, it, everything he does is absolutely insane. And when he's on, when he is on, when he is on fire, like I don't, I don't know. He might be the best, 
bell to bell performer. Yeah. This company has. And that's saying something. Like this man was in a match tonight with Brian Danielson, Katsuhiro Shibata. Uh, I mean, really, really talented dudes. And I'm just sitting here and I'm going, hell, I want more Claudio. Like, it, yes, please tag Claudio into this match. Thank you very much. Let's go. Uh, we did get a, um, uh, yeah, we do have, um, we did get Shibata getting yeah. the win with the PK. Like you said, Cresty, it was kind of at the, uh, at the beginning we saw him at the end we saw him. But hey, he got he got the job done, and as Sean pointed out, it it did make sense for him to to kind of get this win here tonight. I would say, and Rick, get ready. I would say Shibata winning was a safe bet, and you want to make a safe bet? BetOnline.ag is the official betting partner of Fightful. One hundred percent of the time, when you get the odds from Fightful, they are coming from BetOnline.ag, and it's not just wrestling. It's not just MMA and boxing. It's football, it's basketball, baseball, hockey. They have the earliest lines. You can bet big with the high limits and rebet functionality. They have the fastest payouts with winnings paid in minutes and the industry's best bonuses on every qualifying deposit. They've been trusted for 25 plus years. It's not some fly by night company. Bet Online AG has been there. They've done that. In addition, they're trusted by millions. They've got VIP rewards programs and a ton of popular games. BetOnline.ag. That's where I go to make my bets. That's where I suggest you go to, my friends. Please just bet what you can and bet responsibly. We love betting responsibly. I do. I I did not do that today, but you know, hey, we'll uh, we'll we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Uh we do got a super chat here from Della Common. I will never take for granted seeing Shibata on my TV every week now. TK uh, needs to give him the run that we were robbed of because of the headbutt in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Iridian, mm. what you got going on for the fine folks? Where they can, where can they find you? You guys can head over to Rest Friends on YouTube. That's W R E S T Friends. We just did our WrestleMania prediction show. So head over there and watch that. And that's where we are all going to be next week. And you best believe there's going to be a vlog coming out. So you might see these beautiful, fightful faces on the vlog. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. 10 out of 10. And follow me everywhere um, at Iridian underscore Fiero. Cresta, what do you got going on for the beautiful, fightful people? I'm just kind of here, y'all. I don't know what I'll be doing half the time. But you can find me every Thursday and Saturday, except this Thursday and Saturday coming up because ha, I'm going to be at WrestleMania with these guys. Sorry, Joe Pearl. Every Saturday, I'm here at Collision, Fightful, Iridian, Rick. We had Sean Ross Sapp tonight. Every Thursday, myself and Joe Pearl go over all things TNA. You can find me on X complaining about something, sharing things. If you follow me on Instagram, it's just clownery. Everything is Cresta Star except for S, which is Cresta the Star. There's a link tree in my bio that has all of these videos. So if you're, you don't you're not catching up on the show and you're like, well, I don't want to go through Fightful's algorithm. Crest the Stars got you, girl. Rick, where can they find you? Just before I get into my, my plugs, I, I just imagine like Joel Pearl next week just walking down the street alone and a car drives by and just sorry. Him with a big ass puddle. Like no. that's just where I that's just where I like and it's just all by myself is playing no, like the whole he, time. He needs to be like Batista, all right? <laughs> that man is out there. By he had me until you said all by myself. I'm thinking Boulevard of Broken Dreams. <laughs> oh, My shadow. Anywho, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and yeah, th those are the two that I use. Uh, at Rick Uchino, as it's spelled on the screen right there. Uh, as I said at the top of the show, I had a chance to talk to uh, Rowdy Ronda Rousey last week, and boy, howdy, was she candid AF um she just went off about a lot of different things about her time in wwe um and uh yeah i i put as much of it as i could into that article it is my pinned uh post right now uh if you go down on my wall if you want to check out any of my other work on cage side seats i also put up a review of becky lynch's book uh the man not your average average girl fantastic book cannot recommend it enough and no she's not paying me to say that uh it was just really 
that damn good. And I gave it a great review. If you want to check that out as well, uh, next week before I get out of Dodge for Philly, I think I'm going to be talking to somebody from WWE, but until it actually happens, I'm not going to say it cause I don't want to jinx it. Anywho. Uh, and then I'll be there, you know, with these ladies, I'll be at the press junket. There's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out. So there are reasons to follow me other than I'm just awesome. Occasionally. We'll see. <laughs> Again, reminder, we're not here next week. If you didn't know, uh, if we didn't browbeat it enough, we're all in Philly next week. So we will be back the week after that for the colliders to assemble. Thank you guys so much. Late. Hang on. All right. No super chats. We're good. I got them all. All right. Happy Easter, everybody.